My name is Jason W. Chan, creator of the cartoon character Remy Raindrop and the Beware of the Matrix series. This is the Freedom Fighter podcast. Each episode will consist of short, digestible chunks, all centered on freedom and liberty. In this episode of the Freedom Fighter podcast, I will talk about why I'm opposed to multiculturalism and unchecked mass immigration. Let me tell you about the many outrageous things happening due to the unsustainable Western policy of multiculturalism. Now, I'm a second generation Chinese, Taiwanese, North American. I wasn't born in the West, but immigrated there when I was one year old. My first language isn't English, and as a result of the Mandarin spoken in my household, I grew up with weird-sounding English, and it's possible I might still have a non-native accent even to this very day as an adult. Now, it wasn't until I was a teenager that I noticed I had a weird accent, but unlike some people, I actually took steps to fix it to the point where I sounded native-like. It was a lot of conscious effort, but was definitely worth it. However, lately I noticed there have been waves of immigrants to the West, to North America, who not only have weird-sounding English, but also refuse to do anything to fix it. Why is this refusal to learn proper English, which by extension means a a complete refusal to integrate, problematic? For one, it is extremely unfair to those such as myself who were born elsewhere but grew up in this country. Now, if I made the effort to fix my English, why shouldn't they? If they want to become one of us, they must first sound like us. For another, language is more than just a tool for communication. Language is also wrapped up in our identity. This tendency is tribal. If you want to become a member of a tribe, you must first speak the tribe's language. I mean, that's just common sense. Now, I want to emphasize this has nothing to do with race, but everything to do with culture, which is another word for a way of doing things. I don't care what someone's race or ethnicity is, as long as they do things the North American way, or at least they're willing to abandon their old ways and learn our ways, I have no problem welcoming them to my country. Let's be honest here, because if living in their original country was really that great, then why the hell would they even entertain the notion of leaving it entirely and immigrating? Logically, doesn't that mean that our country has something or does something, such as better health care, education, and economic opportunities, better than their own country? So now we've established that our country is better, then wouldn't it make sense for them to learn the ways of the better country? But the problem is when first-generation adult immigrants leave the motherland to set up shop in a new foreign land, they will not abandon their original, their original rather, culture and language. Why? Because absorbing a new language and culture when you're an adult is very hard. But this clinging to the old culture leads to another problem. When you mix different cultures, especially when they are the complete antithesis of each other, you're only asking for trouble. This problem is exacerbated by the government's immigration and multicultural policies that state that new immigrants don't have to integrate. They don't have to learn the ways and the language, leaving us with a cultural mosaic. This policy will not only lead to conflict, but may also lead to a complete civil war. I mean, this is how wars start, when there are people who are diametrically opposed to each other in the same country. Now, How exactly will this happen? Well, first, let me state an example. Here is an example of incompatibility among cultures. Honor killings. Now, this news story I read about 
in the Canadian news. Now, in Indian culture, an honor killing is a practice of killing your daughter because she has brought dishonor and shame to the family. Many years ago, there was an incident in the Canadian news. An Indo-Canadian family who recently immigrated to Canada decided to return to India for a vacation. There, their daughter met and fell in love with a handsome but poor son of an Indian farmer. Even though her hand in marriage had already been promised to a wealthy Indo-Canadian businessman, acquaintance of her father's, she eloped with this farmer's son. When her father found out he was livid, he ended up killing his own daughter and then fleeing back to Canada. In India, since honor killings are tolerated, although not exactly legal, I believe it exists in some gray area, his sordid action wasn't seen to be as despicable as other crimes in Indian culture. So the father fled back to Canada, and due to lack of extradition treaty between India and Canada, he still lives as a free man in Canada. Is such an honor killing allowed in Canada? Of course not. Is it illegal? Yes, of course. Such flagrant a violation of the law should not be tolerated. This is how certain cultures are complete opposites of one another and therefore incompatible. Thus, when there is a clash of cultures, the new host country must win out in order for any social harmony to exist in that country. This is why I oppose multiculturalism. It is a failed experiment that simply does not work. At home, you can do whatever you want, practice whatever culture, and speak whatever language you want. As long as you don't infringe on someone else's rights, the government does not have a right to tell you what to do in the privacy of your own home. However, in public, everyone must conform and become one. They must be made to speak official languages of their new adopted country, which in many cases is English. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. It's the only way to achieve a cohesive, united country. But now, do the... Due to the asinine government policy of multiculturalism, immigrants are emboldened to behave as though they were still back in their own home country, honor killings and all. We simply cannot become an international airport zone where anything goes and the rules go out the window. That's like allowing the house guests to take over your house and make the rules in your own home. Let me give you another example. I have a friend who works in public health. Let's call him Mr. Okamura, or Mr. O for short. His workplace truly shows the wonders of diversity. It is full of Filipinos who loudly speak their Tagalog language in the workplace. It is brazen and vociferous and disruptive. It is not only the loud foreign languages, it's also the incompatible culture, which of course means a way of doing things. That has become a problem. Since every ethnic group in Mr. O's workplace has a different way of doing things, which again is just another way of saying a different culture, they all form their own groups based on culture. In other words, each cultural group has its own cultural bubble that excludes non-members. For example, white people have their own group, as do Filipinos, etc. Such splintering into tribalism, factionalism, cliques, all of that, it merely fosters social dissension and discord, leading to an atmosphere of isolation and social friction. Now, let me emphasize that it doesn't matter what someone's race or ethnic background is. The physical parts of us cannot be changed, and they're mostly irrelevant anyway. However, what we can change is our culture, which is our way of doing things. So yes, I'm advocating assimilation. In order for a country to function as one united whole, we must all share the same culture, at least in public, such as the workplace. But politicians keep parroting a popular but false talking point. Diversity is a strength. I've heard this over and over again ad nauseum, and I'm absolutely sick to death of hearing that point. In other words, these politicians don't think we should all share the same culture. But is diversity really a strength, or is it just dogma from left-wing politicians? If you diversify your stock portfolio in the 1980s and bought only five shares of Apple Inc., would you be satisfied with that? Is diversity really a strength, or is concentration a strength instead? I think it would make more sense for our country to have only one culture. 
That way, everyone is on the same page, and we would all know what to expect from one another, which, which would lead to less social awkwardness and more social cohesion. Let me give you another example of why our government must take a firm stance against multiculturalism. Picture this. Let's say that out of the goodness of your heart, you have allowed a house guest to stay with you temporarily. She's fleeing an abusive husband and needs a place to stay until she gets back on her feet. Now, because we're kind-hearted, we've allowed her to stay, but with conditions. We, she must obey our house rules. For instance, one rule is that peanuts are banned in the house because we, the owners, are deathly allergic. One whiff of it could prove to be fatal. But our house guest has blatantly ignored our rules. She leaves peanuts everywhere, and the peanuts could easily be accidentally mixed into our food. But in her culture, eating peanuts is not only okay, but it's a staple. In fact, peanuts are available with every meal in her mother country, and without it, a meal is considered incomplete. Any sane person would kick her out of our house immediately. I mean, she is threatening endangering endangering our lives, right? But instead of kicking her out of our country for violating our rules, the current government has not only allowed her to continue to violate the rules, but has given her the keys and even the deed to the house. This is insane and must stop. We must not allow the house guests to take over the house. Unchecked immigration, especially those of an incompatible cultural background, is akin to a home invasion. The invaders have won when they're allowed to call the shots in your own house. This is why I oppose multiculturalism and unchecked immigration. This has been Jason W. Chan. And as usual, keep pursuing freedom and liberty. Always defend your freedom and liberty. Without it, we are slaves, and being a slave is no life at all.